This is a modified version of lectures 31 and 32, where I focus only on finding the basis of a null space. So remember that the null space of a matrix, written null A, is the set of all vectors for which A times that vector equals 0. So it's the solution set of the equation AX equals 0. And that is a subspace of Rn, which means that it contains the 0 vector, it's closed under vector addition, and it's closed under scalar multiplication. So now what we're going to look for is a special set associated with that null space. A basis for a subspace is a set of vectors that has two properties. The set of vectors must be linearly independent, and the set has to span the subspace U. In other words, if I look at the set of all linear combination of these B vectors, remember that's what the span means, all linear combinations of those B vectors, B1 up through BP, when I look at that set of all possible linear combinations, the set that I get when I do that is the subspace that we're talking about, the subspace U. So in this lecture, we're going to talk about how do we find a basis for a null space. So let's do this through an example. So let's say we want to find a null space for this matrix, sorry, the basis for the null space of this matrix. Um, and again, remember that what that null space is, is the set of all solutions to the equation A times X equals zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the solution to that equation. We're going to solve the equation AX equals zero, and we're going to write our solution in parametric form. So when we set up the augmented matrix for this matrix equation, remember that we had this matrix looks just like A, except we have this additional column of zeros that corresponds to the right-hand side of our equal sign. And then we can row reduce that matrix, which gives us this matrix here. Let's remember how we put together our, augment, our uh, parametric solution here. So remember our columns correspond to variables, x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. And so if we write the general solution, solving each equation for the basic variable, we get x1 equals 2x2 plus x4 minus 3x5. x2 is free, which we're going to write that as x2 equals x2. x3, looking at the second row of my matrix, is going to equal negative 2x4 plus 2x5, and then x4 is free, which we'll write as x4 equals x4, and x5 is free, which we'll write as x5 equals x5. So when we write that solution, so this is the solution that I just had on the previous slide, we can split that up into several different vectors, one vector for each free variable. So we had three free variables, x2, x4, and x5, so we have three vectors, one corresponding to each. So these three vectors are the three vectors that I want to focus on. So if we give those three vectors names, I'll call them B1, B2, and B3, I claim that these three vectors form a basis for the null space of A. So you know we just learned that word, so let's think about what does that mean. That means that we have to prove that these three vectors are linearly independent, and we have to prove that the span of these vectors is the actual set null of A. So why are the vectors linearly independent? Well, remember, every vector in that parametric solution corresponds to a free variable. In our specific example, we had free variables x2, x4, and x5, and so that course, each of those free variables corresponded to a different vector. Now, in that vector, the component of that vector corresponding to the free variable is 1, and the, com the component of all the other vectors corresponding to that free variable is 0. If you remember, in my solution that I wrote out, I wrote x2 equals x2 and x4 equals x4, and x5 equals x5. So there wasn't anything else, right? There weren't any other x2s except for the one x2, x equals x2. So there weren't any x4s in the x2 line. There weren't any x4s in the x5 line. There weren't any x2s in the x4 or the x5 line. So these were zeros, and these were zeros. And again, x5, there were no x5s in the x2 or the x4 line. So those were all zeros. And the coefficients of the ones that we did have, those were ones. So we had a 1, x2, a 1, x4, and a 1, x5. So we just focused on where the free variables were. We just have a bunch of ones and zeros. So let's imagine what a linear combination would have looked like. So if I have some coefficients multiplied by this first vector, remember that we had a vector of coefficients corresponding to the first free variable vector of coefficients here, vector of coefficients here. If I multiply those three vectors by scalars and add them up, 
and supposedly get the zero vector. Well, in the x2 component, what would I have to have, have multiplied by this first vector to end up with this zero? It doesn't matter what I'm multiplying the second vector by because that's getting multiplied by zero. It doesn't matter what I'm multiplying the third vector by because that's being multiplied by zero. So the only way that I'm going to end up with a zero in that second component is if I multiply the x2 vector, the, the, the first vector, but the vector that corresponds to the free variable x2, I have to multiply that by zero. That's the only way I'm going to get a zero in that second component. What about the fourth component? Remember, the second of my three vectors corresponds to x4. So what do I have to multiply by the second vector to get a zero in the fourth component? It doesn't matter what I multiply the first component by, uh, the first vector by. It doesn't matter what I multiply the third vector by, because in the fourth component, those vectors are being multiplied by zero. So I have to multiply the second vector. That scalar also has to be zero, because that's the only way I'm going to get a zero in this fourth component. Similarly, the fifth component, the scalar that I multiply the third of my three vectors, the vector corresponding to x5, that also has to be a zero. So a little bit complicated, but what this means is that the only way that you can find a linear combination of your vectors to end up equaling the zero vector, the weights all have to be zero. Let's try to visualize it again here. So suppose we had a linear combination of these vectors. So let's focus on the second component. I've got a 1, I've got a 0, and I've got a 0, and supposedly that's going to equal 0. So on the left-hand side, if I were to actually work out that linear combination, if I look in the second component, it's going to be c1 times 1 plus c2 times 0 plus c3 times 0. And how is that going to ever equal 0? Well, if you work that out, that means that c1 has to be 0. And if I look in the fourth component, I've got a 0, I've got a 1, I've got a 0, and supposedly that's going to equal 0. Well, in that fourth component, I've got c1 times 0 plus c2 times 1 plus c3 times 0. How is that ever going to work out to be 0? That means that c2 has to be 0. And in the uh, fifth component, I've got a 0, I've got a 0, I've got a 1, and then somehow that's going to work out to be 0. If I work that out, I'm going to get c1 times 0 plus c2 times 0 plus c3 times 0. Sorry, c3 times 1. And so again, how is that ever going to work out to be 0? That implies that c3 has to be 0. And if we think about the definition of linear independence, that means that these vectors are linearly independent. The only linear combination of these vectors that can equal the 0 vector is the one where all three weights actually equal 0. Okay, so that's only half of the word basis, right? So basis means that the vectors are linearly independent, which we've got that now, and that they also span the subspace that we're talking about. The subspace we're talking about is null A. Remember, that's all vectors that are solutions to AX equals zero. But this right here, this is the solution, the parametric form of the solution to AX equals zero. This tells me that all of these vectors X look like x2 times that first vector plus x4 times that second vector plus x5 times that third vector. So that tells you that those three vectors span the null space, right? Because the, the span is all of the, linear, all of the linear combinations of those vectors. That's exactly what this is saying. The right-hand side of that, that equation is all linear combinations of those three vectors. So that shows that every vector in the null space of A is a linear combination of those three vectors, b1, b2, and b3 and every linear combination of b1, b2, and b3 is in the null space. So that's the basic idea. So what we've learned is that to find a basis for the null space of a matrix, we just need to do something we already know how to do, which is to find the parametric form of the solution to ax equals 0. Once we do that, the vectors that we get in that parametric solution, the vectors corresponding to the free variables, those vectors form a basis. So the basis here, the basis, B-A-S-I-S, -S, is the set containing those three vectors. 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, negative 2, 1, 0, and negative 3, 0, 2, 0, 1. That set of three vectors forms what we call the basis.